Hello everyone, hello viewers, and welcome back to Cars with Ben. In today's video, we're going to go over five fast wagons that you can afford under £10,000. And please note, all of these videos will be obviously other uh, people's videos, so that's just a disclaimer. So I will be mentioning them in the uh, description. If you do like this video, comment, subscribe, like, and let's jump straight into five fast wagons that you can afford. Let's go. So starting with number one is the Ford Focus ST. So as we know, the Ford Focus ST has been around for quite a while now. Um, it's been around since the early days of the this Gen 1, when they made it in 2005 and 6, I believe. Um, and then before that, they were making, probably even before that, in the 90s. Um, the current ST that we have here is the latest of the, or the last few generation models that we've had. I believe it's actually better than normal ST uh, because it's rarer, and for that reason, it just does it more for me. It currently sits with a two litre inline turbo, which is the same as what you get in a normal ST, and there's a the comparisons, uh, but it does look a lot cooler. For me, it's just a car that you won't see as much, which is what makes it rarer. Prices roughly now, you could get them for around eight to 10 grand. So still under that 10 grand budget, which I think is really good for a performance Ford, because that's effectively what it is. Um, and you won't see it as much, which I think is a really nice thing. And another thing as well is it comes in different packages. So as you can see here, this orange sort of lava looks excellent. You know, it could look good in gray, it could look good in blue. And I think that's the, the customizableness of the ST estate. Um, again, a lot of these are depreciating quickly due to new models re releasing and just that the estate wasn't as popular. I think what's great is if you were a tradesman, for example, you could have an estate, you could take your stuff to work and still have a cool car to drive back in. Uh, and, you know, it may not be used like that, but for me, that's what the estate kind of resembles. It's just that working spirit of the Ford Focus. Um, and I'm sure many would agree, you know, it's got all the updated tech and it does look really good now. So that would be my number one for performance wagons um, in no particular order, of course. So let's jump straight into the second slot. Coming in at number two is the Alfa Romeo 159. Arguably the prettiest car on here. Um, for me, this is the one I would have, is the 159. Alfa Romeo 159s, are, of course, are notoriously very unreliable and Alfa Romeos generally have been. So electrical issues have been no faults and the servicing, of course, costs a lot with that. So it's something to bear in mind if you are looking at a 159. However, I would totally recommend it because you see absolutely none of these. And even though that is something you should be aware of, I think it is a very cool car and a very petrol head car too. Um, what's really cool about the 159 is it's the only Italian estate on here. And the reason for that is Italians just don't make estates. The 159, of course, has been shown in Top Gear. So, you know, it's got quite a bit of coverage and it's just an awesome looking Italian car. It's got that styling that you just can't get on any other estate. Prices are roughly around, I'd say, nine to eight thousand pounds for a good one. But you can also get one for around six, five, if you're looking for a lower budget. Um, of course, you can get that special sports edition, which does raise a price. But again, you really want to look for the best version of this because going cheap on one of these is definitely dangerous. The engine is probably one of the best parts of this car. It is very well designed and looked at. Like if you look at it visually, it's just very beautiful to see. And for me, the side number plate really does it. However, the reliability has to bring this car down quite a bit just due to its Italian pedigree, uh, which is a shame because you just don't see as much on the roads as you would have done previously in the uh, 2000s and 2008, 2009 when it was released. Of course, Alfa Romeo didn't sell as many, so that was a problem. And again, another reason why I don't see it. But again, I definitely picked this car over the majority because the, the run flat tires, the interior is excellent and it would have to be in my top five sports uh, performance wagons. Moving on to number three and a very popular one, the Subaru WRX Estate. Now, I should just say before we go on, there is this normal, the sort of updated facelifted version, but it has come with a lot of known faults. So it, you do have to be careful with that. And I would just suggest looking at older models that were around 2003, 
2002 to 2006. Here you can see the WRX estate as the one I'm talking about here. Uh, again, most was seen in Top Gear when uh, Hammond took it on the Africa Safari. Excellent car, as we know, um, and a very, very well-liked car. Now, obviously, in most cases, I usually say the saloon. I prefer the saloon, and that is definitely the case here. But the estate is just so usable. And look at the size of that trunk. It's fantastic. Of course, being all-wheel drive, um, unlike the other car, other estates in this list, it does have that advantage. Now, these are probably the cheapest estates on here. You can pick these up for as little as £3,000. So again, an excellent, excellent bargain. But if I would recommend if you are looking for a Subaru estate, maybe spend around six to five, it's five to six roughly. Um, however, again, dis its disappointments are the interior is, as you can see, very lackluster, pretty boring. But I think that would make up for it more in the car because, you know, you've got an awesome estate car that you can sleep in as, per as shown on Top Gear. Um, so again, really love these estates and very popular, unlike the Alfa Romeo, because they actually worked for a longer period. And as you can see here, here's a more modified version, which with the wheels, with the right wheels, if you get it, you were to modify it later on, are fantastic. And here, you know, the estate obviously has that huge boot. You could take a bit of some of your family, you know, for £3,000, performance and family, you could just say that could be your family car, which is excellent. Uh, obviously, you've got the turbo. So just some things to bear in mind. Running costs on a Subaru are not notoriously high. And insurance, again, notoriously high being a Subaru. I believe it's around a three litre. I might be might be wrong on that. But it is something to bear in mind if you are looking to get a, a Subaru estate. But it has to make my top five list. Coming in at number four is the Volkswagen Golf R. Now, yes, I've gone a slightly over budget here. But I have seen for some for around 10 grand. So it had to sort of take the space. Yes, I could have gone with the Passat, but for me this is more interesting. And I'm gonna go in against what the majority would think here. It is better than a normal golf. For me, similar to the ST, it shares a lot of its combination in terms of its uh, body and its the way it looks. And again, being in the state, it is rarer. For me, the R estate is a lot cooler than the normal R, just because it's so I like cars that aren't as popular, and the Golf R Estate really does that for me. And if I was to pick between that and the ST, I probably would go for the Golf just before because of its performance and its pedigree. And there you go, a huge boot, so nothing to complain about there. And again, yeah, very similar to the ST uh, Estate. It was it's pretty much built on the same foundations. Uh, I think the interior is a lot better than the ST. So that is something to bear in mind as well if you are comparing between the two because I know they can be competitors. Uh, prices are around to 10, but you can find maybe high mileage ones for about 80,000. So if you want to go for that, less than 10,000 uh, pounds for 80,000 miles, that is a possibility, but it just might not be as well ran because they are fairly new cars still. However, you have got that R and you know Volkswagens are dealerships all over the place. So definitely will be able to get that fixed. I think another thing that I really like about the Golf, even though I don't like normal Golfs, uh, generally speaking, I don't like the Golf at all because it's so common, but it is a just a great sort of all-rounder car. Again, much like the ST, you could use it every day. You know, it's not a car you want to hide away. It's a very much a daily car. And for that reason, if you had a, you know, a sports car like a Toyota GT86 or a uh, whatever, and maybe a Toyota Supra, Skyline, MG, whatever, this could be your daily car. And I think that's where this really has its key role. I would never have this as a, your only car, but for me, a, a Golf R would be perfect for that situation. And coming in for final number five is the Volvo S50, V50, I believe, uh, R. Again, a rare, sensible Swedish option. So prices for these are around five to six. Uh, you're probably looking at about eight for a good one, possibly, depending on the performance. Uh, but obviously, being performance wagons, you will want to go for the R because that's what it's all about, having fun. Now, this is probably one of my favorites on here and probably the one you should go for if you are a sensible person. The Volvo is well known for its reliability, very much unlike the Alfa Romeo. 
and there aren't really too many known faults with these cars. They are very good cars. I love the interior, the way you can just sort of put your hand through the middle of the dash and then out again. That's very unique and very Swedish. And I think these are very stylish and they, I think they've aged quite well for being almost like 10 years old now, maybe, and more. So they are definitely very affordable and probably the one you'll want to go for if you're a very sensible person in a career uh, and you don't really want to be too, uh, too overstated. And yeah, I definitely love these Volvos. They just look the part. And of course, they've got the biggest boot by far, which, you know, in terms of performance estates, we have to talk about that. And reliability and MPG are all great things with this Volvo. So it is something to consider. And you get, look at that boot space, you could get a lot in there. So definitely one of my favorites on this list. However, if I had to pick, I'd probably go for the Alpha overall. Although I know that would be a huge mistake in terms of reliability. Anyway guys, hope you've enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next video. I've been Cars with Ben. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed.